Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and today we're going to talk about tall centerpieces. So I have quite a few videos showing how I build things out, but what you folks have told me is that I wasn't as clear with like all the mechanics that go with it and questions were still being asked. So this video is really just about the mechanics and how to do it safely and structurally sound and all the things that you need. So first off, tall centerpieces, they're larger, they're gonna take more product. Um, they have to be assembled on site. So you can build it in advance, but you have to put it together. And so they're a bit more laborious for that reason, for a DIY bride, I would suggest not making all of your centerpieces tall. Um, personally, as a designer, I like both sizes. So if it's a, if it's like a larger space, like a ballroom or a barn, where you kind of want that visual height, do three, five, or seven. Seven at the most. Like you don't want to get into ten or fifteen. Um, five is kind of my perfect number. And then do the rest short. Um, you will thank me later. Okay, so the one of the main questions that I'm asked is when can I build this? So you can build, you can green it out two days before, but you want to wait to backfill with your flowers until the day before. And the only exception with that is hydrangea. If you're going to use hydrangea in a large centerpiece, which a lot of people do, those really can't be placed until you get to the reception because the, this foam and this loamy bowl, it does not hold enough water to keep those hydrangeas happy. So for that reason, for a DIY bride, I would say leave the hydrangeas behind on a tall centerpiece unless you have helpers, family members who have no problem like taking the pre-made centerpiece to the reception and then just backfilling with those like five to seven to 10 large hydrangeas. Okay. So the first thing that we need to talk about is stability. A lot of people ask, what should I place my tall centerpiece on? And for a DIY bride, this is going to be your most inexpensive option. Um, this is just a cylinder vase and this is 20 inches high. You can go taller than that, of course. And you can easily find these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or online for relatively cheaply. Um, when I use these, which I use these often, I still fill it up with water. It creates more stability for the arrangement and it, it kind of hides any like dust marks or um, like finger marks or anything like that. It kind of hides any imperfections. And then people aren't as willing to like move it on the table when it's filled with water. And surprisingly, um, guests do that, especially men named Chad who are former frat guys. I will see them move tall centerpieces, take them off the table, which like is infuriating to me. And if you're wondering if I say something, I absolutely do when I'm a wedding planner. Uh, I'm not there to make friends. <laughs> so um, this is very stable and this Lomi bowl fits perfectly on top of that. This one, a lot of girls like just because it's really, it has a really pretty shape. This is more of a trumpet. If you're gonna go with this, it's stable enough. You're gonna fill it with water and you will use a six inch Lomi bowl. So stands, that is what's the most popular. And I have my heavy stand right here and this is very heavy duty extremely tall. Um, as a florist, I have these because I can reuse them, but as DIY, you probably don't want to invest $150 in these heavy metal stands. Um, in saying that, there are a lot of cheap stands on Amazon that I don't want you to buy. Uh, they're, they look similar to this. They're very dainty and they're gold. Um, if they're around $20 to $30, they're going to be way too flimsy to hold a loamy bowl with wet foam and with florals, this becomes very weighty. And so those stands may work for silk flowers and like dry foam, but if you buy those cheap things and start putting this on top of it, um, it's, it's not gonna create a stable foundation. It will be able to topple off easily and it will only break your heart. Um, additionally, I've seen on YouTube, uh, people have made videos of how to create gold stands for less than $10 and it usually involves like wooden dowels and paint uh, stirring sticks and I don't want to knock anybody who puts their creative idea out on YouTube um, but if you do that with Gorilla Glue like it's suggested it will completely topple on you so that um, those videos are probably great again for silks but not for fresh florals. 
Uh, it's my goal this year to try to source a stand for DIY brides that are a little bit more affordable or at least tell you how to make one at home. Um, but right now I don't have that, so we'll stick with these. And if you can find stands that are around $70, those are typically a lot more stable. And then you can resell those on Facebook Marketplace and recoup your money. They're, they're pretty easy to sell. And my DIY brides, they do tell me they'll, they'll spend it up and buy five of those and they'll easily sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, so we've talked about stability. Let's talk about the mechanics. You are going to need a floral designer bowl. This is a Lomi bowl. And don't try to go with like a plastic bowl that you would use for, you know, at a picnic. Those aren't uh, stable enough. These Lomi bowls are very rigid and tough. And um, so you don't wanna cheap out on these. These aren't very expensive. This is a nine inch and this is a six inch. And this is what we sell. Uh, personally, I always like to use the nine inch unless I'm putting it on something like this. This doesn't have as, um, this is oh, probably like four inches and I would really have to align this perfectly. If not, it could be offset and tip off. So the six inch fits perfectly on this smaller um, trumpet vase. When using the cylinder one, I love the nine inch. It fits on perfectly and it has like kind of a ridge so you know exactly where to place it. And for the tutorial or for explanation, I'm gonna go with the nine inch and it calls for half a brick of foam. And you always wanna tape it to your Lomi bowl. Where's the seam? Okay, here we go. Now, you can get away with just taping the edges. You always have to start with a dried surface, but this, um, this tape is extremely tough. Personally, as a florist, I just like things to be extra stable. So I come around with it. So I know he's not going anywhere. And this is waterproof and it will, like if it gets wet after the fact, it will hold up on you, but Personally, this is just what I do. So this is how you'll get it started. And it will set on top of your vase like this. I wanna make a side note, a lot of people ask me, what about the mechanics, like can you see? When you start to build something, it's going to come out and hang over and all the florists that I know, they just leave it um, to where, like you can't see it walking up to it. Now, if you were to get underneath and look up, you can see the mechanics of it. Um, people probably aren't gonna do that, but if that's stressing you out, because I know it's stressing a lot of DIY brides out because they email us to ask, you can always spray paint the outside of this. So you can come in with some gold design master or white if that's gonna like stress you out. But most florists, they just leave the Lomi bowl clear and you won't be able to see it. Okay, I do wanna make a side note. I don't really feel this should apply for DIY brides, but a lot of learning florists watch my channel. And if you're building something that's gonna be really weighty, let's say it's like gonna be all roses or all hydrangea or very heavily rose, heavily um, hydrangea, large centerpiece, you want a little bit more stability than what this tape can create. Foam will break apart with weight. So if I have to do um, really large, all the flowers I just talked about, I will take my foam and I'll wrap it in chicken wire and I'll zip tie it. And that way I know that when I'm transporting this in and out um, and moving this around, it's not gonna break my foam in half. It's not pretty. Um, you know, you put it in your Lomi bowl, you still tape it down, but you know that that foam won't break apart on you. But like I said, you don't wanna build something this hardcore when you're DIYing. It's just, it's too much. I'm gonna just protect you from yourself right here. I want you to really enjoy your experience and we don't want to stress you out. Okay, I'm taking notes so I don't forget um, to, to mention anything. So when I go to build, I like to usually have like a little box and I like to have a Lazy Susan. I don't build on my vase. Now I'll set it up there and step away to see if it's looking right. Um, but I, I typically, I always build on the table and I like it a little bit elevated because I want it to kind of hang. 
So I'm not gonna build this all out, but I'll tell you how I get started. I always set my margins. So this is some Robolini palm. It's always intimidating to get started, but I figure out the width and the height. So I would come in with my greenery, whether it be leather leaf, like I love leather leaf to start anything out. So I know that's about as wide as it's gonna be. I would do that on all four sides. And then I would decide how tall it's gonna be. So probably about like that is what I would go for. So at this point, I would feel very confident just to green everything out, stay within these margins, and then I would backfill with my blooms. And just like I said before, you can green it out two days in advance, and that's honestly what takes longer, is to just get everything greened out. To backfill with your blooms, it's really easy at that point. Okay. Let's see, lastly, how do we attach it to our vase without it falling off, especially if somebody bumps the table? What you never want to do is just set this on here and walk away. You always want to have something to adhere this Lomi bowl to. And what I suggest, and we sell this, and this is the only time I ever really use floral clay or floral putty. Um, this is sticky, it's stretchy, it's like that tacky stuff. It's like gum. You don't have to wrap the entire uh, lid, but you wanna get some, some good coverage. And this is something that you would do on site at the reception. So you're gonna fill it with water at the reception. You're gonna dry this because this is waterproof just like the waterproof floral tape, but it always needs a dry surface first to adhere to. And so really I just want these few sides. It doesn't have to be perfect. One other thing that would work is if you got these like really hardcore clear glue strips, but they would need to be the permanent ones. So see this stuff? I've used this before, but honestly, I like the, this is so sticky. It's kind of hard to work with. It's hard to pull off. So I do like the, I do like the clay, or the floral putty. So then you would set this on top and you would push it down, make sure that you get really good contact. So see how I can, ooh, <laughs> I can almost lift this up. It's not going anywhere. So when someone bumps the table, this thing isn't gonna go falling off because this is gonna be super top heavy. But we're also gonna fill this with water so it won't be as likely to um, tip off. I think I have covered everything. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us and thank you so much for joining us today.